So, um, welcome to the LSP Wolf. I'm glad we are more than two people. So, here's the little agenda I've prepared. Um, just a short introduction on what's LSP, if you don't know. Then discuss the source package in Debian, two specific binary packages that are LSP base and LSP release, and open discussion, action points, and feel free to interrupt at any given time if you have compliments, information, questions, whatever. Um, so what's LSP? From Wikipedia, the LSP is designed to be binary compatible and produce a stable application binary interface for independent software vendors. You can check the link if you want. Um, the spec actually lists very extensively all interfaces, so binary interfaces, data definitions precisely, so including the headers of the various libraries that have to be into, uh, that have to be into a given distribution, the surnames, etc., across multiple architectures, I think something like 14 architectures. Um, there was S390X introduced recently um, in LSB. Well, recently in terms of LSB time space. Like it was probably introduced last year. Um, LSB is there mostly as a useful reference for non free binaries so that you can compile them on AMD64 against a given set of libraries and expect that to work on any um, certified distribution and yeah, it would just run without crashing and do what you want it to do. Of course, if you have a free software, you can just uh, download the source and rebuild it in every distribution. So it's not really there for for free software, but it's more a service from free software for non-free vendors. Um, there are two tools that are av available that are provided by the Linux Foundation. One is an application checker that you can just upload your application and will check if the interface you use are in the LSB um, release that you point to and the distribution checker that is something that will launch a virtual machine or within a machine uh, don't try to run that on your laptop because it will run as root and do many dirty things on your file system so that's why you should probably run it in a virtual machine last I tried it was a quite hard to run and B then you get like 500 things that you have to fix in Debian and I probably mostly gave up <coughs> Um, the source package in Debian, uh, you can check the tracker or the package uh, PTS for that. Uh, basically, it's Jeff Lickia and me for Debian, Vorlen and some other people for Ubuntu have been also doing some changes there. Um, we have some differences between Debian and Ubuntu for mostly historical reasons. They were implementing the upstart detection and feature functions there earlier than we have introduced in Debian and then we kind of have a little difference in some scripts for the uh, exit uh, the exit numbers that we should merge but it's a little tricky so it just was pending work um, it's tricky to maintain well it's not a certified implementation Debian never actually went to LS to the Linux Foundation to get the, the Debian certified Mostly, I think, because no one was caring about that, probably, and because no one was either asking for that. Um, the source package is a little tricky to maintain, because if we don't do the check-in, then we just assume things work, and then we just... Uh, sometimes we have to do compromises. For example, the LSB 4.1 that is supported in Wheezy mandates Qt3, which was removed. So we kind of decided we just add a readme so that if you need that you need to know there is a readme <laughs> need to read it and then you need to go and download the Qt3 the latest Qt3 version compiled from the snapshots it's not ideal but it's way better than having me or anyone else maintaining Qt3 for the time span of Wheezy um, the new problem that is that will probably hit back in some months is that it's probably vastly broken with systemd because a large part of the LSB, um, LSB uh, norm is about how the init scripts behave and what exactly you should put in, a, in an init script and how you interact with the init script so that's probably broken now to the binaries there are two important binaries in the LSB package in fact I think there are 12 the other one is our um, uh, virtual, like they only have dependencies. Like you, you can install LSB desktop and you get the dependencies to match what is mandated in the LSB desktop specification. But these two are specific. LSB base 
in, is one of the rare packages that are installed on all Debian machines that boot using CC in it, and is also run at every boot. So it's shell script that is launched at every boot multiple times. So trust me, when you upload that, you do it carefully. Um, remember the green OK blocks on the Wizzy boot that was in that that uh, in that package. It was actually a new thing in Wizzy, which makes me smile every time I see a Wizzy machine boot. But yeah, that's for the anecdote. So basically, it has init functions that implements some of the things that are mandated by LSP and that are used either by non-Debian init scripts or by Debian init scripts, like the log daemon message and friends are all convenient functions to just output things to the screen and like you have one function to tell the first thing and then you have two or three functions that you can use to say this was done, this was done, this was done and add the points or add the return lines and stuff like that. There was also init as upstart uh, that was added I think after that was added to the policy to just to make it easier to integrate the upstart init system in Debian 2 uh, but none of this is used with when using systemd unless actually that's wrong unless you use the original init scripts and not the systemd scripts because they will still run that shell so unless we manage to transform all init scripts in Debian for Jesse to systemd and we drop CSV in it which will not happen we can not drop that package at all um, this package has 13 bugs of which 10 are non one fix because the like requests or wish lists that are not or just uh, diverge a little from the um, from the norm and there is some merging with Ubuntu bedding there that we should just do to make sure we have the same I think it's speed of proc that has some tiny stupid differences that we just have to fix um, the other one is LSB release um, that chips a binary in your user bin to discriminate distributions. Basically, LSP release will tell you if it's running itself on Red Hat or on, or on Debian or on Ubuntu and in which version. I mentioned the fact that it's silly because when you have a new application, you should not be checking if, the, if you are in, on a certain distribution, you should be checking for features. So unless you do things for cloud or things that are at the distribution level, uh, no one should be using LSP release, but 94 source packages are doing that. Packages should use OS release? No, they should not check for releases at all. But yeah. I mean, it's used, so, and it's mandated in the LSB, and people can assume it's there. So LSB release also returns the LSB versions that the system is compliant with. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. And the modules in which there are, and yeah. the architectures. Yeah, just speaking of Mac for, just leave sure. it there. Leave yeah, yeah. Pass it around, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's easier. Um, well, the specific thing there is is that it's Py it's a Python implementation, quite old. I tried to add some uh, some unit testing to be able to migrate that to Python three without with a proper code, but I just stopped in the middle of that because I mean. It works with Python 2, and we have Python 2 anyway in Debian, so I think Ubuntu has probably this automated Python 2 to 3 thing, which probably works most of the thing. Um, but it's a Debian-specific implementation that will guess, build, or invent the version number out of either the files from base files or using apt cache smart, which is broken apparently currently. So it has three bugs that need to be checked, but I didn't have time. Um, yeah, that, uh, that buff is going very fast, that's good. And now, the open discussion. Uh, what should be kept in Debian? Um, A, nothing. So we just leave it uh, as that. I probably, I would then orphan the package just to make it clear for everyone that I'm not caring about it. Um, we would keep LSB base and LSB release and drop the meta packages because they don't carry much interest if, if we're not certified. Um, Fix the bugs in LSB release and LSB bugs, uh, LSB base. Don't touch the rest, so we stay at LSB 4.1. Or fix the bugs, upgrade to the latest LSB, which is 5, with uh, they have released beta 2. But we need to do active checking, otherwise it doesn't make much sense. But that would need help, because I spend a little time 
fixing the existi existing bugs, mostly for the latest release and making sure some things were included and making sure LSB base was kind of useful, but I don't have much interest in making non-free software work. So, yeah. So, I'll open the discussion. I don't have much more to say than that, so I welcome opinions, volunteers, or whatever. Or we can just stop and go to the beers immediately. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I have a question about the systemd stuff. Uh, have you been following, has the LSP workgroup said anything about systemd and what their intent is with the init scripts? I don't know. They have been discussing things. Yeah. They're very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I think, the l I just checked while preparing that, I think they had a meeting in March and they said, we do a GitHub thing public and since then there are three unanswered pull requests there. I don't want to be mean, that's just facts. So, um, I think they've been discussing the systemd thing, they've been discussing the dropping of Qt3 for years. I think it's been dropped in LSP5, but much I don't know much more than that. Jeff would know he's involved in the LSP directly. Well, this, uh, this example you give, maybe the Qt3 thing uh, mainly, uh, uh, make me think I'm not involved in LSP uh, maintenance, of course, uh, that uh, it, it's mostly a relic uh, nowadays. I mean, do you know if it's really used in the non-free world, or is some promise we made and uh, we we uh, we keep because we are good at keeping promises? Uh, I mean, how important is it to to Debian or to any dis distribution? I mean, I think that's the core problem is that we don't know. And I haven't had any feedback besides some people using trying to install some random thing and having the init blah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the init, I think the script that installs the init is broken or was broken. We just reverted something and it's or not broken break, anymore. Mm -hmm. I think the core, the core problem is that we don't know. We don't know if people are using it. And I think we, we have made a half promise. I mean, we promised that we do LSB, and, but there are various ran readme files that just say, this is not certified and is, don't take it, and take it granted as it will work. So that's why I think either we do it properly and we make sure we certify it, or we stop pretending and drop everything besides the thing that are actually needed. And both need work and the, the, the no work thing is we just leave it at that for Jesse and but just orphaning and... Uh, okay, you said about uh, well, more or less the difference with the Ubuntu situation, but what uh, kind of uh, thought or effort is given to LSB by other distributions? I think, but I don't know, I think Red Hat manages to get itself certified. I think OpenSUSE is getting itself certified too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but besides that, I don't know. But does does anyone know in the audience if 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 LSP is used by people, <laughs> or is that an expectation from people? Well, I think it was more than just for ISVs. Part of the intent was to have binary portability between distributions and to ensure that no one distribution broke the ABI in such a way that um, that distros were going to start diverging. So to some extent it was to prevent uh, kind of what happened with with Unix where everything diverged and we wanted to keep you know one, one common standard. So from that regard it's still I think interesting to ensure that Debian maintains ABI compliance but in terms of the certification and some of the other tools um, I don't know if it's worth the effort. I mean it even mandates things in CUPS and it, I think the LSP mandates the support for CUPS 1.2 and we will have CUPS 2.0 in the next release S and I'm almost sure there are things that are broken in ABI compatibility since then mm -hmm. and we've not been checking, Ubuntu has not been checking and yeah. and it's probably broken. So, so the other thing is at one point we had a BTS tag that was associated, I think we use Debian-LSB at list.org yeah. Debian is the BTS tag and when we encountered failures in the test suite, um, bugs were filed on the appropriate packages. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if, if, if how many of those <laughs> uh, still exist. So you you mentioned you the, the bugs. And <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned the bugs on the LSP packages themselves. It would be interesting to yeah. know how many of those are still open. And then also, you know, 
if somebody wanted to run the yeah. tests again and see what's still failing and if new bugs need to be filed. Um, that effort might be kind of interesting, but. Um. I mean, yeah, patch is welcome in the sense that I think the only way is to run regular Jenkins tests that would run that properly uh, every I don't think you know, <laughs> you'll ever get the LSP test suite to run, run that way. It is, it is uh, at least unless they've done a lot of improvement, it is a horrible mess uh, that was inherited from a bunch of the old um, Unix uh, tests, yeah. and it's just, it's just crazy. It took a lot of effort to run. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, my, my current feeling is if any, if no one volunteers, I will probably orphan it as is after fixing the easy easy fixing bugs, just to make it clear that nothing new will happen. Uh, we have five days to merge the difference with Ubuntu guys, and we we'll just do that and then. Well, hmm? Yeah, I'm. I'm just reading the diff what we have in Ubuntu, and it's not much. Yeah, it's just a shell. Conditions in different orders, I think. And Python 3 support. Yeah. I mean, the Python 3 is more a question for Debian to decide if whether we want Python 3 in the base installation or not. And, yeah. Because, I mean, because it's pulled by LSB release mostly. LSB base, well, LSB release is pulled mostly by in build DDs, I would say. Well, yeah, ideally for a lot of these packages you want it to depend on either Python 2 or 3. Yeah. Such that at least one of them is sufficient, but then obviously Shebang needs to re-exec under the correct Python that's available and yeah. things like that. I mean, I've done that for a couple of packages where I actually wanted that, but... Yeah. Does anybody know what's in LSP5? I've checked rapidly, I think just more libraries, some updates, and yeah, I didn't check, honestly. So because yeah. that might make a big difference whether you decide to keep maintaining it or not. I mean, if there's going to be no solution for the systemd stuff, and there's other dependencies that are going to be hard for Debian to fulfill, then well, I mean, the other way of looking I mean, at it is if they added things that aren't already in a current Debian release, the problem was with LSP, not with Debian. Yeah, because the whole point of the, uh, the LSP <laughs> is it's no seriously the whole point of LSP is it's supposed to document. What's done? The, the current consensus, what already exists in the distros, and help the distros maintain that compliance. So if they're going off and specifying uh, things that aren't already yeah. the reality on the ground, then there's nothing we can do about that. And I think one way to look at it is to take the problem in the inverse and look at very common non-free tools that people use. Skype is providing the bin packages, Dropbox is providing the bin packages, I don't know what other examples, but most of us have made it. Valve, our sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> so, are there, the question I, is... I suspect they're not using the LSB linker, and they're probably <laughs> doing <laughs> other things, and they probably explicitly test on the platforms that they support, yeah. rather than count on binary Do we know if uh, we have any of them at our conference? Mm -hmm. Seems like we should ask them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could just mail, yeah, Dev DevConf discuss to see. I mean, Skype is not using Cube 3, it's using Cube 4. Yeah, so, well, because parts of Cube 4 were kind of integrated in LSB 2, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the convincing factor would more be if, if a big non-free provider would say, yes, we do use that and we do expect and we pay people to make sure it happens in Debian. Mm. Or we don't pay, but we convince them with beer or something like that. But can you scroll up to yeah. the beginning? Because I've missed it. All right. That was just, yeah. Right. Not much. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any other in inputs? Yeah. Well, do you have any idea how much, like, how much effort it would need to do these? Well, do the second options, which are to keep LSB and fix the things and or upgrade. Like, how many more ands do you need on the on a package to get it to a point where? I need patches on on five to six bugs, not much. Yeah. And if we want to upgrade to LSB five, it's mostly I would say a half day checking which libraries must be in, 
adding the dependencies to the virtual packages and then having someone to launch the distribution checker somehow and s just the, the problem is that if we run the distribution checker and it says there is a missing symbol in whichever library I'll file a bug against that library and the guys will say well yes but I need that patch that is changing this AVI for this res reason or this bug mm -hmm. and then we just have a non-fixed bug and we f fall out the certification so or we file an exception with the LSP worker <laughs> No, yeah. I mean, seriously, yeah. that's part of the certification yeah, sure. thing is that you, you, if we have a good reason for why we're doing something, then we apply for an exception or we get them to fix the standard. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. But point. it's a lot of work to, it's mostly bureaucratic work going back and forth. Yeah, um, I must say I kind of expect that from Jeff Likia that is involved in both Debian, the LSP package and the LSP process. So I was... That's the same if the producers have been following the printing talk just earlier. I'm exactly in the same situation. I just ended up being maintaining LSP, not because I'm interested in, but because it was broken before a stable release. So just doing it. Okay, so if everyone is in this room checks the list of bugs and files one patch each, then it's solved. <laughs> <laughs> Any other inputs? Do you have a web browser? Can we check the those, that tag I was talking about and see if yeah, there's any sure. still open? Yeah, sure. If the Wi-Fi is kind of working. Uh. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 um. You need last name as well. Yeah. Blah, yes, 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 yes. Everyone has read that, of course. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was just wondering. <laughs> Do not attempt to use garbage. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of why it failed. Blah, blah. While we wait for that, does uh, Jeff Laquia still work for the uh, Linux Foundation? I don't know. I've seen his RC names in some blog posts. They've been released for 5 beta 2, I think. So. But okay. I've, I haven't been in contact with him. But I know he's on the Debian LSP mailing list, so it's not really a high traffic list. Nah. <laughs> okay, the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to solve this problem. Okay. Looking aware. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's better. Uh, we'll see if it works with green internet. Good. Um, tags. How does tags work? <laughs> what is it? Uh, you go to uddd.net and it has a tag search? I think it has a tag search like there. In... Ah, yeah, you might be right. It might be faster. Uh, Bugs user tag. User Debian LSP. Well, you can just search for... Oh, okay. <laughs> um, that was useful. Okay, good. They're all solved. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Good. Was it I had a username though? Can you just search for LSB without the user? Uh, like in, only in that. Only the tag. Like <laughs> both the user <laughs> and LSB. Uh, yeah. Uh, same. Still the same. Totally yes. okay. <laughs> Is that the only one you filed? No, there, there, <laughs> were, there were dozens at one point. So. Yeah. If we select. I guess archive. That, yeah. yeah, they should be because this one should. Well, that's be your point. They might still be open, but archive. <laughs> <laughs> because the package so got removed. Yeah, you know, like they're so <laughs> old or whatever. Yeah. Package removed, all bugs closed. I mean, it was in like X packages and libc, I mean, you yeah. know, things like that. So they, they might re weren't removed, but maybe renamed. Yeah, 2x11. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, so um, I'll check if I find something, but yeah. I would hope. Jeff would be running this on Debian and would know the current yeah. state of how many failures there are. But 
Yeah. Do so they, I will do they have a website somewhere where they publish these numbers? I think the. They have this infrastructure program, blah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, and then you have a web interface of things that run in the console, and yeah, you don't want to try that. Mm, I've s used to see some results somewhere. Where is that? Mm -hmm. I think they had distribution checker. Yeah, I don't. I can't find it now. I mean, they even test Moblin. <laughs> Still? <laughs> yeah, they started it last week. Important <laughs> <laughs> uh, resources. Over 500 participants. It's nice. Now that's just the ABI database, I think. Yeah. So I, I did mention Valve earlier, and it's uh, reasonably likely that they will at some point outstrip Ubuntu in terms of sheer number of deployments, um, in terms of being the largest Debian derivative, because they have the Steam OS, which they are planning on licensing out to hardware manufacturers as a standard PC gaming console of sorts. Um, that they may be, um, they may care a whole lot about this, so it may be a good idea to, to make sure that they are part of. Yeah, discussions of what happened. Check with them at least. Mm -hmm. Good idea. I'll just try to write that down. It looks like somebody ran tests in well, 2013. I'm not sure whether it was the last UDS, but the last physical UDS, I think, Valve did run a session about ABI stability <laughs> and the things that they would care about. And mostly it was we want the latest graphics drivers. But we want <laughs> Alsa to be stable. <laughs> okay. And then we're like, yeah, just ship truths with your compile. You know, statically compile everything. Yeah, no, no, they can't statically compile because it doesn't link. But <laughs> and we don't ship enough s libraries to compile statically. But yeah, there were like things they were asking. It's like they were, oh, can you keep X stable? ABI, <laughs> yet make it, yet make it work with latest NVIDIA drivers, which are binary only and require special specific X ABI. You can, you can hit them at buying NVIDIA. Yeah, and and, and in essence, it was kind of very open ended because in terms of what like Ubuntu or Debian could provide stable enough for the lifetime of the game, mm -hmm. versus what they needed for that game to still be running, because. In essence, they wanted to compile it once only and never recompile <coughs> it unless they really, really have to. Because mm -hmm. they kind of deal with like archive and longer term type of games. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't LSB cost much asking. Yeah, LSB alone was obviously not not enough. Right. I mean, part of the problem is just this, the, the, the scope. I mean, how do you do to check 700? Thousand interfaces, and the combination between those interfaces. Of course, and uh, yeah, more than a thousand five hundred lib libraries, thirty thousand classes. Looking forward mm -hmm. to it. So yeah. So I have I've added some action points. Uh, I'll probably start from the top, and yeah, if anyone's interested in helping, feel free. Other than that, I suggest we 
had uh, two beers. <laughs> or sleep. <laughs> Thank you. And have a good night. <laughs>